Hello, hello, and welcome back to City Skylines with Splat. In today's episode, it's time to get industrious. We need some jobs in our city, and I want some cold, hard cash. So it's time to start slapping down the factories and let the big bucks start rolling right in. So there's a couple of things I need to do with my city. If you look down here, you will see that I have quite a bit of industrial demand. So I think what I need to do is upgrade my farming area a bit to provide some more jobs for people and possibly expand the fishing area. As I start to level up my city though, I am gonna start getting access to some of the unique buildings as well. And so I might wanna look into doing a little bit more with industry, uh, perhaps getting the ore development going and things like that so I can have the raw materials that I need or some of the new uh, unique factories that I can build and start making some money. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so looking at our farming area over here, I wanna see what else I have access to because we've gone ahead and put in uh, the flour mill, but I'm wondering if how much farther I need to go to get a little bit more of an upgrade. So I'm at 183 of 184 workers and workers until my next level is 200. So I need to add a few more things in here so that I can get more workers into the area and go ahead and level this up to the next level, which is going to unlock some new stuff. At level three, I think I'm going to get like the milking parlor and I'm going to get some bigger fields and I'm going to unlock some new uh, unique factories because right now I only have the bakery unlocked but I think upgrading the farm gives me the lemonade factory which is a really good way to make some money so let's go ahead and get this farming area upgraded and add a few more things in here just to see what we can do I bet it would be really nice just to have another one of these flour mills uh, just so we can sell the flour because we are gonna put the bakery in eventually so we're gonna need one of those so let's pause the game I want to put the flour mill in here because it produces some pollution and I want to be able to keep the pollution away from the farming area over here. Eventually we are going to have to buy some more land to expand the farming that way we're out of space here but this is what we're going to do for now. So first things first we're going to grab this road and we're just going to bend it around something like that. I'm not actually going to connect it here because I just want to put in another one of these flour mills. We're going to go to our farming area. We're going to grab the flour mill. Yeah, we're going to put the flour mill right there and we're going to go ahead and decorate this thing in. And then I got this little empty spot here, which I bet would be a great place for a warehouse to store some of that flour. So let's grab this guy and move him over just a little bit. And let's go ahead and just decorate it in a little bit. Let's block off the view from the road to make it a little bit more attractive with some trees. The warehouses that come with the vanilla game just don't really cut it in my book. So I have gone through and downloaded quite a few more um, that I want to be able to put in because the warehouses that they have are just big and massive. Like this is the smallest warehouse that comes with the vanilla game. And it's like the size of the entire flour mill. I don't understand why you would need an area the size of the entire manufacturing area just to store barrels of flour. So I like some smaller ones. So I've gone in and tried to find a few that are smaller and I wanna see if I can put one in here that I like. Some of these work with industries. They're ploppable industry ones and some of them don't. So I gotta be a little bit careful about which one that I pick here. But let's see if I can find a warehouse that I like that will fit into this area. 
I think that'll work. That's about right. I'm gonna do a little move it mod action just to kind of trim this up a bit. All right, and we're gonna set this to take flower. All right, so I think we're go we're good here with buildings. So let me go ahead and just put some trees and things in because I want to see if these two buildings offer enough working space for us to get to the next level and be able to move on to building other unique factories and increase the size of our fields and things like that so we can start making a little more money and provide a few more jobs for the people in our area. So let me just put in some additional uh, trees and things here and I will come back and we'll let the game run and we'll see how we do. All right, there we go. So the agriculture area has now leveled up to where we can do the lemonade factory, the milking parlor and the medium uh, crop and fruit fields. So we need more jobs. There's a big demand for industry. So let's pause the game and let's look at putting in a milking parlor over here. I think we can just go ahead and include that in this area here um, into this section where we have the flour mills. So let's take a look at what the milking parlor entails. And we have a milk parlor right here. The milk parlor does produce a little bit of pollution. So I think I wanna keep it maybe away from there. Let's take a look at putting the milk parlor in this little spot here, if we can. We can squeeze it in right here. We can just anarchy it in. And then we can use the move it mod to kind of adjust things. Yeah, I think that'll work just fine. If I need to, I can always bring this row down a little bit and make that change. So let's drop that in right there, the milking parlor. And let's grab the move it mod and slide it over just a bit. And do I need to move the road at all? Does this fence go into the road? Yes, it kind of does. So let's just use our move it mod here. And we're going to grab this road like so. And we're just going to pull it down. Done. One time. And I think that should be everything I need to do. Um, we'll go ahead and curve this around just a touch, but it matches and there we go, we're all set. Okay, so we've got the milking parlor put in. Let me decorate that um, eventually. We also have this space here and I wanna add more uh, crops that are growing because the special factories that we're going to be building are going to require more animal products and crops. And we need to have a lot of those to keep these two flour mills running. So let's take a look at our farming stuff again. And let's take a look at these medium crop fields that we have. So we've got a medium crop field. How big is that? That is that big right there. OK, so if we're going to drop this in on that gravel road right there and we want it to line up this field well yeah we want it to line up with this field here if we can we have space here but we can't fit another one of these big ones in so let's go ahead and grab another one but let's just use these small crop fields and we'll drop the small crop field in like that we'll change it to the same thing instead of wheat uh we're gonna go with uh corn actually i downloaded some mods that allowed me to make these look a little bit different like wheat cut corn canola or like rapeseed oil that's that, that texture is just not great okay uh vegetables oh that's kind of neat looking i mean don't get too close to it but from out here it looks all right okay um cotton now you know what let's just go with the corn for now because it looks nice and it's gonna match we're gonna move it mod that over just a touch and get that all lining up <laughs> the way it's supposed to okay and then i think we can just put a fence around this like we did over here give it some hedgerows and this will also help us produce more of the crops that we need so let's grab ourselves a fancy fence All right, so that's gonna give us a little bit more crops. This is going to give us more animal products and we're ready to do the special factories, I think. And to do that, we're gonna have to go somewhere and figure out where I'm gonna put it. So let me decorate this milk parlor and get this detailed in and we will move on over to the next area where we're going to do our special uh, industry build. Okay, we're all decorated and put in and we are ready to go figure out what we're gonna do our special industry building. So let's hop over there and see where that's gonna be. 
Okay, this area in front of our new high density residential area that we put in, in the last video is going to be where I'm where I'm going to put some of these special uh, factories. Uh, I think having them across the road and a little bit away from this over here is going to be fine. It'll give people a place to work where they don't have to go too far. But on the other hand, it's going to be separate so that we don't have to worry about the noise and the eyesore of having some manufacturing uh, across the way. Will it ruin the view of the bay? Probably, but I'm thinking that this area area down here anyway by the ocean behind these service buildings this is going to turn into fishing warehouses and some other things anyway because the fishing industry is going to extend down here all of the uh res all of the resort stuff that's going to go somewhere else the really high ritzy uh things and th that's going to come along later so i'm not too worried about destroying the line of sight um we have this recycling center and we have this fire helicopter depot that are in the way so those are going to have to move so let me get this cleaned up a little bit and uh, put some roads in and i'll shoot and i'll come back and, and we'll talk about what we're going to do with the unique factories So after a little bit of finagling, we've got the helicopter pad and the recycling center pushed over and settled into the services area over here. And our new factory, if we click on our industrial button here and we go to the unique factories, we're gonna put our bakery into this area right here. And I think we might just put it right up by this road or I'm gonna pull another road in because I wanna be able to put a warehouse in here as well. So let's go ahead and drop that in. I think that's probably gonna be as good a spot as any. We're gonna to have to do a little bit of smoothing out of the terrain here, but we'll come back and do that in a bit because as you can see, our factory is floating up above the world. I wonder if that would look any better if it was facing off of that main road. I think it does. I am gonna to have to go through and straighten that out. But what I also wanna do is I wanna bring this road around. We're gonna to have to pull this back just a touch. And I wanna surround this with a roadway. And then I'm gonna upgrade this road to make it one way so that I don't have to deal with these two intersections causing trouble. We're gonna grab this and we're just gonna make this a one way road around there. So they're gonna come up, they can come around and go in. And back here, we're gonna to try to put a warehouse. Let's see if we can fit one of my warehouses in that I have. So we'll go here, we'll click on warehouses, and I know I have a smallish one that I used in the other area, which is this one here, and that would work great, but let me see if I can find another one that would fit in here. Oh, that's really close but I think I'm just gonna have to go with the smaller one for now. I have these distribution centers, which are actually just modular warehouses. Do any of these fit? No, they've got the big parking lot in front. So we'll use those another time. All right, we're just gonna go back to this bog standard small warehouse that I enjoy using. And we're gonna drop a couple of these in. We're gonna put one here and we're gonna put one here. And the reason we have two of those is because one is going to be for flour and the other one is going to be for animal products. You know what, if we're doing animal products maybe we could get rid of one of those and go ahead and do like a barn uh, don't I have a barn that can store crops nope those just do crops okay so we're gonna stick with this for now and over here we're going to probably put in one of those barns because I want crops to be stored uh, that tree is a little unusual you know what we're not gonna do that we're gonna go with the grain silo just because it fits in a little bit better with what we're doing here and we don't really need that much because of the fact that we're only doing one bakery all right let me play with these roads and get this all to line up a little bit better with the with the factory here and not be so weird looking and I will come back and show you what I have and then we'll move on to our next challenge
bakery is installed and all set up and it is now producing Go Nuts Donuts, which everybody loves a good donut, don't they? In the back, we've got the warehouses put in with some fencing to block them off from the road in the back, some trees to hide the ugly warehouse backs. And over here, I put in this grain silo. And then just to kind of tie it all together, I use the surface painter tool, uh, we need to fix that there, to put some pavement in. Uh, I have these little crate, I think they're probably maple syrup because they've got the big maple leaf on them, but hey, whatever. Got these crates that I put in as a decoration, put down some parking decals and a few trucks in here just to make it look a little bit more legit and yeah I'm liking the way this is looking and it's gonna be producing quite a bit of money for our city so that is good so this next section here is a bit of a good news bad news situation so let's start with the bad news the bad news is I just spent the last hour and a half building and realized I didn't record a single second of it which I was hoping to do to show you guys and I also explained exactly what I was doing the entire time which is really fun uh, the good news is I do have a really nice looking park asset that I've put in and you know there's nothing stopping me from explaining to you once again what I'm up to so let's take a look on the river I have these two bridges I have this bridge here and I have this bridge way over here and this is how people walk back and forth between the two sides of my city. So if you live and work over here and you wanna walk, you take this one across or you take that one across and if you work over here, so on and so forth. What I did was I decided to be a little bit cheeky and come up with a way to basically get free money and not have to worry so much about my budget in the game because what you can do with the game is if you put these bridges behind a park gate, people have to pay to use them to get back and forth and they will happily do so. And if you can turn it into a decorated park with a lot of entertainment value, you can also get the park to level up. And as you levels up, you'll be able to charge more money. What I did was I just took my park painting tool and I painted this area in here. I destroyed the bridge and I replaced it with a bridge that is surrounded on both sides by park gates. And then I took my park painting area tool here and I just went down the river and I connected it up over here with this and just painted in all of this park area. When I was done painting it in, I just right clicked and deleted all the stuff in the middle. And what happens then is these two districts are now connected and are considered the same district. If I mouse over them, you'll see how they're lighting up and showing that they're connected. So that means that even though this area up here doesn't have any space for me to actually improve the park and make it look attractive, because I've connected it to this park over here, all of these improvements that I've put in have allowed this park to level up. And as you level up, you're able to charge more money. Right now it's at $20, and as soon as this levels up to level two, I think it goes to 24, and eventually it gets up to $40 a head. Uh, people are willing to pay that because it allows them to walk back and forth across the river. And if you look here, just by putting a park in, I'm getting $700 in total income just from people who want to cross the river. And so it's free money, it's a great way to uh, help the income of your city, and is it cheesy? Yes. Did I do it? Yes. Am I ashamed of myself? No, not really, because, you know, I am a benevolent leader. I, I give them things as well. So let's take a look at the park that I built. We've got a jungle gym climbing thing that I put in. Uh, we've got a little cafe that people can use. I built a custom little playground here using some assets and props that I have in my library, and I really like how that turned out. Uh, we've got some gazebos. We've got some restrooms. We've got a park information center. And then over here is an extra gazebo with some other stuff. And I went ahead and drug the park out over here to this area because if I need to add more entertainment, I can always fill in this little grassy area. Or currently, I just have flowers planted um, to make this part of the park as well and help with the entertainment value. I uh, went ahead and used a fence just to separate the houses from the park, put these pampas grass in front to kind of block off the sight lines and make it a little bit more attractive for the people who live there. And now I'm ready to hit the go button and just let this thing run until the park levels up. And let's see how wealthy these two simple little bridges can make us. So we'll be back in just a second to see how we do. I've let the game run for a while to get this park that I put in all leveled up. And as you can see, we have hit max level and now we are pulling in $40 for every person who wants to cross the river, which is really nice because that gives me an income of 2,142 
with an expense of only about $400. So I am making a profit now. So this means that even if some of my other things that I'm doing, like public transportation get get expensive, this is gonna help offset some of the costs. And I can do this uh, more and more. And as the city grows and more people use these parks to cross the river, that number is only going to go up. So super, super useful. I like it. Is it cheap and cheaty? Maybe, but uh, you know, like I said in a previous video, I am not necessarily here for one-to-one -one realism. I'm here to have some fun. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so the fishing area has been updated and upgraded. I went ahead and replaced the uh, original fishing harbors that we had with the new shellfish ones because I like the boats better and they also make a lot more money and work a little more efficiently. And I also brought out the uh, decorated area a bit farther and extended this industrial beach. Now, the next thing we're going to have to do is put in some of the support buildings for the fishing area. So up here by the train tracks, we're actually gonna be putting in um, like fish warehouse and some different things. And we're also gonna be looking at possibly putting in our railway system, but I might save that for another episode just because that's gonna get really involved. But I do definitely want to, I'm gonna have to bulldoze a few things here and bring this road up and put in a fishing market and a warehouse and, and things like that up here at the, the head of the beach. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at doing that. So we're definitely gonna have to bring this road through. So we're gonna use our grabber and we're gonna grab that road. Now, do I want, I think I wanna make like a loop perhaps that goes up and around. I wonder if I could get away with doing a one way here or if I should just go ahead and do a regular two way and perhaps hook it up here somehow. Bring this down and over. Yeah, that would work. Okay, so let's bring that over. I think the fishing stuff is just gonna go right here. So to connect these two, I'm just going to use the Network Multi-Tool, which is an amazing mod that I really enjoy. And I've got this Create Curve mode here, and I'm gonna click on this node up here, I'm gonna click on this node down here, and it is going to automatically create a road that connects those two together. And I'm gonna hit Enter, and voila, we have beautiful, beautiful roads. Then I'm gonna grab Picker, and I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna bring a little thing off here, which is going to cause some bulldozing to happen but that is life and i'm going to use the same tool again click a node click a node it's going to create a curve and there we go uh, i wish that the, the one thing i really don't like about city skylines is this ruined texture that goes in next to all the roads and things i, I wish it didn't exist and I, I don't know how to get rid of it if anybody has any ideas on how to get rid of that could you please let me know because i have been playing around with it i'm a bit at a loss and i don't like it um, there's not much i can do about it Okay, now that we got that put in, we are ready to look at what kind of fishing industry buildings we have here. So we have a fish market and we have a fish factory. Uh, the fish factory is fairly large and the fish market is fairly large as well. Um, I'm wondering if we could put the market perhaps here, you know, put the fish market up here and then do like a decorative boardwalk with a bit of a design uh, in front of this uh, structure here, which would require us to destroy some of this landscaping I did down here, but that could be kind of cool. Or uh, we could look into just pulling a road off. Yeah, that might actually work. Let's see here. Um, if we grab that road, what if I just did something like this? Now, what can we do with that ugly eyesore? of a cliff face back here. Can we get away any smoothie smoothie action? Doesn't look like we're gonna get away with smoothie smoothie action. And to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know that that looks very good and that I'm very happy with that. Um, this might be a bad idea. Or we could do away with this in the front and bring it further down. Let me play with it for a little bit and see what I come up with.
So this is what I came up with for the fish market. I went ahead and pulled it all the way down to the beach and dropped it in, put a retaining wall behind it to kind of support the hill so that we could still have the fort up there. Uh, dropped in this little walking path behind it using some of the uh, park assets that come with the game. And I think it still looks okay. Um, I'm not a real big fan of the terrain, but there is some limitations in the game and what you can do with it. But we do have a, it's got, it's got to decorate it in, put the rocks in. We've got this car that's apparently going to drive through the stones to get in and out, which is really cool, but hey, whatever. And then over here, we put in our fish factory. Uh, just pulled it in off the edge of this curve so that we can still leave all of this space open in front to do other things with. And yeah, uh, I didn't have to do a whole lot of decorating for the fish factory because I mean, it is just a factory. It is what it is and it does what it does and it is making fish. So yeah, our fishing area has been upgraded. So now that we're done with our fishing and now that we're done with our farming, there's one more piece of industry that I would like to put in during this episode because in order to actually have some of the special factories that I want to have, we are going to need some ore. And if we look at our map here, you will see that up here in these hills, there is a rather large ore deposit. And I think I wanna go ahead and use uh, some of this. I'm not, I don't need a huge ore area, industry area. I just need some to work on some of the special industries that we're going to have. And then once we get all these industries done, we'll be able to continue working on residential and install new residential areas. Uh, to be honest, I'm kind of waiting a little bit on residential because I want the new update to come out so that we can use walkable residential areas in the new districts and everything. But for now, we're going to pause the game and we're going to think about how do we want to put industry up here. All of this dark green stuff is going Going to be the ore industry and I think I want to put the ore industry as far away from all of that as possible. Uh, let's grab our area here and we're going to paint an industry area and the industry area is going to be this right here and I hope we don't need much more space than this to get all of the ore that we need and we can buy more land later and extend it over there. Um, the terrain is going to be a challenge for sure. Let's just pull an industrial road to a small one for now. Okay, I think we can work with this. It is not the best road I've ever made, but it's going to work and it's going to get us where we need to go. So now we just need to start putting the stuff in. So let's take a look at our industry here and go to the ore industry section. And we'll turn this view off so we can actually see what we're doing. Um, I'm not going to detail this out right now because like I said, as soon as this thing upgrades, I plan on changing all of this out. I do not want to keep this stuff as it is. There are more efficient buildings coming in the future that are going to allow us to uh, build that a lot better. And these warehouses are probably going to have some adjustments made to them too. So I don't want to detail them in yet because it's just wasting my time. Okay, so the traffic doesn't actually seem to be that bad at the moment, so I think we're just going to let this run for a while. Uh, I, I don't think it's going to level up anytime soon because the number of workers that we have, 53 until 75, um, as you can see, we have a huge demand for residential right now. So I don't think we're going to get a lot of workers moving in simply because we upgraded the farm and we upgraded the fishing. And so this area is going to require a little bit more time to get built up. So in the meantime, I want to expand this green high density uh, residential area a little bit further. And I want to do the same thing that I did before with these flowery passages, but I want to experiment. I saw a comment 
in my last video where I did this. And by the way, thank you guys so much for all of the feedback that I've gotten on this city. It's very encouraging. You guys have no idea how much it helps to have people who are actually enjoying watching the content and leaving comments, letting me know it, it makes this so much more fun and so much more exciting and it makes me want to do a better job for you guys. One of the comments suggested that I try the uh, self-sustainable high density and see how that looks. And I agree, I want to give it a shot and see how it looks. I really like the color palette that comes with the international ones. And as this starts to upgrade, um, it's going to get really, really sharp. But yeah, I am willing to give it a shot. So we're going to pause the game and we're basically going to do this again, but we're going to do it over here and we're going to use the self-sustaining high residential zoning this time and see how that looks. So let me get cracking and uh, we'll see how we do. I'm not entirely sure which one I like more. I don't know if I like the sustainable housing with the high residential, high density residential, or if I like the international. The international has a little bit more color to it, but I've noticed that as it's upgrading, things are starting to look very, very similar. I keep seeing the same building over and over and over again, and that's not necessarily what I want. But the sustainable housing to me has kind of a 1970s vibe to it. And I'm not sure that's exactly what I'm looking for either. I might go through and see if I can find some custom dense residential assets that I want to try to use in this area. But for now, I think that's going to work OK. And we've got a little bit more population brought in and we're going to have to do a whole lot more in future episodes with housing. But I want to hold off a little bit because I'm waiting for the DLC to drop. That's going to allow us to do the vehicle free zoning and some other things. So we're going to stop there for now. And I think with this episode, we have actually accomplished quite a bit. Our quarry area has leveled up to the second level and we are getting really, really close to the third level. We just need to get some more workers put in. And like I said, I was planning on tearing things out and replacing them with upgraded systems anyway. And this also unlocks the thing that I wanted, this thing right here, which is the glass manufacturing plant, which is the raw material I need in addition to the crops to get the lemonade factory going and get some more income. So let's get this thing set up a little bit. These things are huge, so we're going to have to do a little bit of moving around and finagling to get this thing to fit. So I went through and upgraded and replaced our quarries. I've got a couple of glass manufacturing plants. We've still got the ore crushers producing metal. And one last thing that I want to do here uh, before I leave this is I like to do a little something to decorate my industry areas because I feel like the game doesn't really have a lot of transportation based stuff that helps with industry. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to come over here to the toll roads and there's a two-way toll booth, um, there's a big one, and there's a small one. And I like to take the small ones, and I like to actually stick them in here, because it just kind of looks like a gate for entering and exiting a industry area, um, and just makes things look a little bit more interesting, and you can decorate the way in. So let me go ahead and destroy this here, and let's see if we can fit one of these toll roads in. This is interesting, the way this is going. Okay, let's do that. Okay. Now we're talking. This is gonna be a challenge to fit in here. I think we're gonna to have to do it there. Okay, that's okay. It's all part of the process. It's all part of experimenting. There we go. Okay, I don't need that anymore. So these earthquake sensors, you might see these around the map sometimes. Um, I use these as 
kind of less visual, uh, cheaty ways to jump power across to different areas. If you look at a power map, you know how the buildings all connect to each other. But let's say this area here wasn't connected. And what you can actually do to make this a little bit more easier is see these little earthquake sensors? They have their own power connect. They have their own little power area around them. And they're very uh, small and unassuming. And you can put them anywhere. And people don't hardly notice them. And if you put them under trees and stuff, they just disappear. But you can use them in place of power lines to try to make connections for power jumps. And that's what I was using that for, but I don't need it anymore. So we're just gonna go ahead and get rid of it. And by the way, those can be found if you have the um, Disasters DLC. Uh, you go into your emergency services, go over to the Disasters panel, and they're right here for the earthquake sensor. But let's go back to doing this road, okay. Okay, so now we have this thing that looks a little bit more like a uh, entryway into the industrial area. And so what I'm going to do now is you, the, the, the reason I like these is because now you can go in and decorate them. So I'm going to come back through here and decorate it and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So let's check it out. So I've gone ahead and gone through and done a little bit of detailing here. I didn't detail everything because I still plan on doing making changes to the main part of the quarry area. But I thought that this front area here is pretty much going to stay the same. And so I went ahead and put some rocks and some trees in to give it a little bit of texture and some height and depth because everything was looking kind of flat. And now I think it looks pretty sharp. I went ahead and decorated also in front of the glass manufacturing plant and one of the grinding mills. And then over by the main industry area, I put in a small little park with some office buildings and stuff too. I think this looks really nice. I like it. So I think that's probably going to do it for this episode. We've made quite a bit of progress in the city today, mostly focusing on industry, which is what I wanted because I wanted to make sure that I had my income in a nice, happy place so that we can build more things in the future. We spent a little bit of time increasing the production of our agricultural and farming area here. This included installing the Go Nuts Donuts Bakery and all of the warehouses and support facilities that it needed, and we decorated this thing out and did a little bit of detailing on it as well. We also made a pretty substantial upgrade to our fishing area, changing over to shell fishing and adding in some extra uh, places for people to work. This included adding in and detailing out our new fish market, as well as installing a new fish factory. We decided to experiment a little bit with the renewable high density buildings with our park design from a previous episode and I'm definitely waiting for you guys to let me know what you think. Which one do you like better? The international theme or the renewable buildings? And last but not least we have our ore specialization going with a brand new quarry that we have put in and decorated out with some detailing as we wait for it to continue to grow so that we can do even more with it in the future. And this is going to definitely open up some really cool unique factories for us to help us get into the money. All right, well, I think that's about going to do it for today's episode. Thank you, everybody, for leaving so many comments on the last few videos, letting me know that you're enjoying it and also give me some suggestions for things that I could be doing in the future. And if you have any more suggestions for things that you'd like to see, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I read every single one of them. If you enjoyed it, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps and it encourages me to continue doing this. If you have any suggestions for the name of this city, leave those in the comments down below. I still haven't figured out what to call it right now. It's just called No Name City. I think it deserves something a little bit better. I've had a few comments, but I want to collect a few more before I offer the suggestions up to you guys to vote on and let me know what you think. So once again, thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll catch you later.